Okay, in the second video on ArgParse, we're going to be using some of ArgParse's more advanced features. Let's go ahead and import the package. Okay, let's go ahead and set up a new parser. What we're going to do is we're going to take in a list of integers. Okay, let's go ahead and add a integers argument. And we'll call this integers. And so we're going to be just taking a list of integers in. So we need to add another parameter called for the number of arguments. That's going to be n args. And we'll just set that to three for the time being. And we'll give it some help text. And we'll go ahead and add another argument. And we'll call this sum. So what we're going to do is we're going to take in what the sum parameter is going to do is take in the list of integers that we passed in. And then it's going to basically add all those together. So we need to pass in an action called store const. So store, if we do not pass this in, store is the default action. However, we're going to be setting a couple of functions here. And so we're going to be setting the Python built-in sum function. So that way, when we have our list of integers, it's going to be able to call this function to add them together. And as it, we'll go ahead and add this, pass in a default also. So if we do not call uh, if we don't do not pass in the sum argument directly, it'll just use the default and we'll just uh, set up our default as just being the max. So max is also a built-in Python function that's going to take our max integer value and use that. And then let's just give it some help text. Okay, so we need to go ahead and parse the arguments. And so what we're going to do is print the, uh, so we need to call the accumulate method of the args object. And so the integers is the list of numbers that we will be getting um, to uh, process. So if we come down here, we're going to go ahead and uh, run the file. And so what we need to do is we need to pass in a list. So we have the number of arguments set to three. So let's go two, three, one. And then so what we're going to get back since we did not pass the sum option in is that we just got the largest number in the series, uh, which is the number three. If we were to run the same thing and pass in sum, Okay, so if we're going to do this, we need to specify the type. Uh, so the type is going to be an integer. Um, I guess it's not inferred, but um, one of the features of the command line arguments using arg parse is um, we can specify the type. Uh, this is also good for um, error handling. So if we were to do something like this, um, it will give us an error because it's we have required the type to be an integer. One problem with the way this is currently is that, so we have a fixed number of arguments. Um, this is going to be an issue if we were to add a fourth argument. What we can do is we can use a plus operator um, if, to take in one too many arguments. So all we need to do is switch this out. And then if we rerun the file, um, so adding those is going to give us 10, and then that should also work to find the, the correct maximum value, um, which was our default. And so for, for this example, we can also, if we, let's take a look at this, the um, help. So if we look at the help text here, um, what we got is the usage. So what we get here is passed in our integers. Um, what we can do is we can use a placeholder, the meta variable. So let's go ahead and add that. 
And I'm going to use a capital N, um, so that should be pretty intuitive that that would be a number. And then if we rerun our help, and it looks like we forgot to add a comma. Let's fix that and rerun it. Okay, so it, so what we got here is, um, remember pri previously, instead of the N, we, we got the name of the argument, integers. Uh, so this is a little bit more intuitive. We have um, N for our meta variable and then the spread, uh, the three dots, uh, meaning that it's a list that we can pass in multiple uh, values for this. And if we were to actually switch this back to three, it should uh, reflect that. Yeah, so we, we would have three ends, meaning we can pass in three numbers. And if we change that back to the plus, then that should um, give us the spread, the three dots again. Now notice that when we call, when we pass in the sum option that uh, these are built-in functions, we could define our own functions also. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one and make a similar one, except we're going to multiply. So I'll just call that M-U-L-T for multiply. And so what we're gonna do this is we're gonna define our own and I'll just change the text here. And from this, um, uh, let's just define multiply. And we're gonna be taking in a list of numbers so instead of adding one plus two plus three plus four, if those are our numbers we passed in, we're gonna take one times two, then that times three, and so on. So we're gonna use the reduce function for this. So we're gonna import reduce, and once we do that, we're gonna return reduce. And we're gonna use a lambda expression. And we're gonna need both X and Y, um, so we're gonna need like the when it, when it iterates through this, it's going to take the first times the second, and then the second times the third, and so on. And so with that, we're going to take x times y. And then the final parameter is the list that we're going to be passing in, and that's going to be the list of numbers, which was passed into the original function. Okay, so we can copy this and put it in here. And then if we were to rerun this, And M-U-L-T is actually the name of our argument. And if we get that, we get 24. And if we were to do the original one, pass the original one in, uh, we would get 10. Now the final thing that we can go over, we can make these mutually exclusive to where we can require that you either pass in sum or pass in multiply, but you cannot do both. So what we need to do is we need to create a mutually exclusive group. And let's go ahead and put that here. So I'll create a new variable uh, of group and parser, add mutually exclusive group. And then so the arguments that of sum and multiply, we need to attach those to the group and not the parser. So let's go ahead and put those, put those here. Okay, and if we were just gonna rerun the same thing we had previously to make sure that that still works. And let's go ahead and just try doing both. So if we try to do both, um, we're, we're going to get an error because we told it that we cannot do both the sum and the multiply at the same time. Uh, let's go ahead and just change this to multiply. And then we get our value of 24. So this is just some of the additional features that uh, we can use and argparse just basically um, gives us to uh, make our command line arguments um, better and more organized and we have some types of input validation. So it's a very valuable tool and very uh, powerful. So this concludes the two-part series on using argparse. Thank you for watching.